Robert Brooks. He joins us now here on the Splash Live. Mr. Brooks is a good friend of Jack Freed, as so many of us are here in West Bloomfield, and also is the chairperson of the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, Mr. Brooks, good morning and welcome to the Splash Live. Good morning, Dave. It's so good to see you this morning. And thank well, you for having me on. I appreciate it. Good to be with you. We we uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day today to share a couple of thoughts and words about Pastor Jack Freed. And, you know, you had the opportunity. You are such a lucky man because you had the opportunity, as Jeff Lee was mentioning a couple of moments ago, to sit down and have breakfast with, with Jack and some other folks every Saturday morning. Tell us all about it. Yes, Jack was really a special friend. And in that, Jack invited me around about 2012, maybe 10 years ago, to have breakfast with him and another good friend, Paul Lipson. And uh, Paul and Jack and myself became known as the Three Amigos gathering for breakfast at Sunny's on Saturday mornings. It used to be at 7.30 until after the pandemic, we went to eight o'clock when they opened. And what was really interesting about this is Jack always liked the booth in the very back, and he liked to sit on that back um, uh, seat where he could get a view of everything that was going on. Jack was that kind of guy who wanted to um, see what was going on, reflect on it, and give you wisdom. And in those moments on each of those Saturdays, we got together and just discussed whatever was on our minds, but it tended to focus on community, on family, and on friendships. And Jack was a connector. He connected people one to another. He loved with all his heart people and their interactions. And he always looked for possibilities. And that's why he was such a special friend to me is because possibilities in this world are something we can't have enough of. And Jack Freed and all of his 95 years, I'm sure looked for that in every day of his life. Well, I think we have a picture. I'm, uh, the guys are busy in the other room making all this work. But I think somewhere we have a picture of your breakfast get-together. We'll get to that in a minute. As soon, Here we go. Let's take a look. There you are um, <laughs> with you and Mr. Lipson and then, of course, Jack over there on the right-hand side. And, uh, of course, Mr. Lipson, uh, many of the people in, the, in our community, you know, is the principal at Roosevelt Elementary in Kegel Harbor for several years. And there the three of you are uh, having your morning uh, Saturday morning breakfast. What a great picture. Thanks for sending that. But I really like what you said because, you know, the years do wear on us physically. And you can even see Jack's walker right there. Um, you know, even with uh, the, his aging years and the impact that had on him physically, he still gets up and has breakfast with you early on Saturday morning and still every day put together his winning words, which emailed, uh, was emailed to many and is on the Internet. It was an inspiration to so many people in our community. Yes, actually, Dave, I woke up this morning and yesterday was his uh, final winning word that was put out by his son, David. And at 5 a.m., they would always be in my email box. And this morning, I really missed that from my friend, his winning words. And he was special with it because he had a way of bringing quotes that he had found and bringing them to life in today. And although one might think that as we age, we don't keep up with the times, but Jack was a progressive of sorts. He kept up with whatever was going on. He tried to keep his eye and pulse on things as wild as emojis and, and things that people <laughs> were doing and saying to him in his blog. And he would, as, as I've heard people say, and I, I didn't engage in his blog much, but people would say that they would say something in his blog and he'd am, answer it by the end of the day. So Jack was just thrilled that people would engage with him on his winning words on a daily basis. Yeah, I've, I've heard that from a number of people, how engaged he was and, you know, how computer literate he was, too, doing all those other, other things that you mentioned. One of the other areas that he was certainly a leader and had a lot of vision um, as to where our community was going was he was somebody that was concerned and thinking about diversity before anybody else was talking about it. Could, could you share your thoughts on that? So let me share a story. 
uh, Jack was very concerned about diversity and sharing into the metropolitan setting. And with that said, he asked me to drive him in recent years down to the city of Detroit and near eight mile, and I think it's near Wyoming, between Wyoming and Livernois, was a redlining zone where there's a wall that separated people with redlining back in the 50s. And Jack wanted to see that with his own eyes and understand it. He did so much research on it to know about it, to understand it. He reached out to people no matter where they were and talked to people to understand different perspectives. Diversity is one of those things where, you know, you have to be part of the community. You have to be part of the conversation. You have to be invited in. And Jack was an inviting person. And, you know, as you looked at us at breakfast, you know, you probably, you know, from some perspectives, people think, you know, here's a guy who's 60, 75, and 95, right? You know, I often thought of Jack as father wisdom because here he had these two younger guys, one 20 years and one 30 years younger than him, and he's imparting wisdom about the things that he's seen in his life and how he still wants the world to change and become one where all people, all people can be included. And that's what was special about Jack Fruit. Robert Brooks, thank you very much for your words this morning. Very good to be with you. Um, we are all going to be smiling and telling these great stories with, with a heavy heart. But uh, certainly, um, I, the, the stories that we're hearing are making me feel better and, and helping all of us understand the joy that this unbelievable person brought to our community and, and will for a long, long time. We'll keep in touch. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Again, thank you for having me, Dave. And just as a closing note, uh, Paul Lipson and myself gathered this morning at Sunny's just to reminisce about our times together with Jack since they're closed on tomorrow. And uh, it was just a fun time. So again, thank you for having me and look forward to sharing with this community the wonderful legacy of Jack Freed. Well, thank you. thank you. Thank you for that. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll and maybe um, you'll take me up on this opportunity. I would love to buy you two breakfast and bring <laughs> along our cameras and we'll just do a, a half an hour live show from the restaurant there. And I think that would be a lot of fun. All right. We'll, we'll work let's on setting that till, one up. Let's wait till his wife, Joan, comes back in right. town and we can do it together. All I'll right. get well, it set up. I'll take you up on it, Dave. All right. Sounds like a great invitation. Thank you very thank much you for joining again, us. Dave. And thank you for your words. Best to you today.